Before we get started in this video, I want to explain to you why you're seeing this video re-uploaded. This is about a TikTok channel called Rin Eleanor. The things that are going on within this channel, they're not good. And the reason I'm re-uploading it is because the first video was suppressed in the algorithm, which is interesting because there's a part in this video where it talks about how platforms seem to be suppressing this top. I'm gonna to walk you through it a little bit later in the video, but thank you for re-watching this video. I know there's a lot of you that have not seen this video because it was suppressed. Also, I wanna take this opportunity to tell you about the fundraiser that I'm doing for in C-A-D-E-V to help survivors in difficult situations. As you know, we did a charities all year last year, raised about close to $15,000 for rain. And uh, I feel like it's a good uh, time as any to go ahead and start another one. We're currently at 246 of 1,000 raised. If you feel like that's something that you wanna do, it should be to the right on desktop below on mobile. Let me know in the comment section if you've donated. That being said, here's the video. Hey, welcome back into today's video. We're gonna be talking about a parent-owned TikTok account that goes by the name of Ren Eleanor. It's centered around a three-year-old little girl named Ren, and some of the content is, well, it's very strange. This is a very disgusting situation as the mother Jacqueline appears to be making inappropriate suggestive content for views. Predator viewers can be seen commenting, duetting videos, and downloading the most suggestive videos hundreds of thousands of times. The mother has doubled down suggesting that everything is okay, but evidence suggests otherwise. Get some tea, coffee, get ready. This is going to be, uh, the Rin Eleanor TikTok account has over 17.4 million followers and over half a billion likes, and it's centered around a three-year-old little girl named Rin. Now, this account's ran by Mother Jacqueline. The primary type of content that's posted is of her daughter, Rin, wearing various types of different clothing and eating different types of foods. Which at face value doesn't sound very bad, but some of the videos made in very strange ways, which leads some viewers to believe that the mother is purposely making suggestive content towards predators and exploiting her daughter for views. Here's some video examples. In one video, it can be seen that the mother has stuffed something down the pants of this little girl to make her bottom look bigger. And uh, it's... Uh, Nikki, 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 let's go to the beach. Each, let's go get away. They said it. What they gonna say? Grab a drink, quick. Nikki, Nikki, my nose. Look at the comments from this video. Now it's important to keep in mind that these are grown men and women making these comments. And it gets worse. There are videos of the little girl holding a shaving razor and making, pretending that she's shaving her uh, area. And the comments are absolutely disgusting on this one as well. There's others where she's pretending to put in tampons. All equally disgusting comments there too. From little man with a big heart, there's no way this baby does not have a boyfriend. Multiple saying that she's hot. Not to mention that these comments have likes on them. Comments like, just wait 10 more years, she'll be a teen. When they stop judging age, we will advance as a society. Within these comments, you can see people actually requesting things that seem innocent, but is actually something that is not so much that in their eyes. Like in a video where the toddler is in a bathtub wearing a bikini suit, little bathing suit type thing. Um, this comment. Please do a video where you kiss her cheeks with a long kiss. So at this point in the video, you might be saying to yourself, well, none of this is uh, the mother's fault. These are obviously disturbed, creepy, and terrible individuals pouring in. But this is not only... Um, exp yeah, God, it's, it's, it's gross. So this video is going to highlight the dangers of putting your children online. It is something that you need to see you need to see what's going on here. You're most likely gonna find this terrifying that the videos with the most views, we're talking over 10 million. These are the videos that involve the little girl being in compromising positions, uh, putting something into her mouth, or wearing more adult-like clothing or bathing suits. In one with over 16 million views, she's innocently playing in water. Her shirt gets wet, and there's a part that's nearly see-through. 
So this video is going to get progressively worse, but it's information that is very vitally important to you. So TikTok's got this feature uh, called bookmarking. It looks like this on mobile. It's a feature where TikTok users can bookmark videos right on the For You page and organize them into collections. So this allows terrible people to curate playlists that they can then easily access and go back to and watch whenever they want. They can also share this amongst their friends. So on a normal video averaging a couple million likes, we have about mm, 14.6 thousand saves. In another video published by the mother where the little girl is in an inappropriate angles using adult items, this one's specifically a tampon, it has an astounding 385.6 thousand saves. Top searches being Rin Eleanor shaving, uh, Rin Eleanor scandalous outfit, swimsuit, tampon. I mean, this is absolutely disgusting. And for these to be stuff that people are searching so often really says a lot. And keep in mind that these were the top searches. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video. One TikToker, Jessica, says this. And you haven't heard the story about what's going on with Rin. You need to listen up. Ren is three, and she's absolutely adorable, absolutely adorable. Her mom posts lots and lots of videos, and they have 17.3 million followers on TikTok, which I had a hard time wrapping my head around. It's just videos of a toddler. What moms are noticing is how many times these videos of Ren are being saved. I'm not sure if you can actually see this when my icons show up here, but this has been saved 10,000 times. This one, of a three-year-old in a crop top, has been saved 45,000 times. Ren eating a hot dog at a fair, 375,000 times. And to top it all off, these creepy men, and let's be honest, I'm going to say men and women because women can be predators as well, um, they're duetting. They're, they're duetting the most suggestive videos in the creepiest way. We have this gentleman licking his lips here. We have another dude way too excited about uh, a hot dog. And keep in mind this was going on for uh, years and people were trying to tell Jacqueline what was going on and she was willfully ignoring it. And not only ignoring it, but still posting stuff where she was, I mean, there's this one video where she has a whipped cream bottle and she's putting it in, in the little girl's mouth and the worst awkwardest way and it was clear that the the daughter was very uh not happy about it at all um but it's just generally if you know about this stuff and you're you're getting these comments and then you're still making this content there's ser a serious issue but it gets worse if you go to the search bar and type in Rin Eleanor, you get the most uh, searched results being things that are inappropriate. I mean, why do you think people are searching these? It's also grown past the TikTok account and people have started making fan accounts of this little girl, this little three-year-old girl, on just about every platform on the internet. Uh, as you can see, here's weird accounts on TikTok and uh, each account's filled with pictures curated of this little girl in awkward, and suggestive uh, ways, and there's terrible, terrible comments. More disgusting comments about a toddler. This is one of the worst and public cases of child exploitation that I've ever seen on the internet. This situation is so massive, it's being covered by multiple credible news sources on the internet and even national television. So obviously this isn't a situation that Ren's mother Jacqueline just, just doesn't know about. And in fact, I actually found a local news article from the time of the, when they first started where she uh, understands that she's making quite a bit of money off this. She's been seen celebrating and going out in the midst of this controversy. And again, keep in mind why creepy men are just staring at her daughter like this and saying things like this. To me, it's very obvious. There's a noticeable spike in views from normal videos to more suggestive videos. This was going on for years before it became a big story. So even if it did start out as an innocent thing for mother and daughter, at some point, it, she had to have known. 
there's no way that she couldn't have. Unless she's just, you know, very irresponsible, which would make sense since her most recent video, she doxed her daughter's teachers, which would show people exactly where her daughter could be found. So people commented on the video to let her know, and it says, update, she blurred out their names. She heard my comment. It's too late now. They already have it. And you can see where it's been, the teacher's names have been blurred out. So obviously this is a very dangerous situation and it brings up an important conversation. So over on the Repzilla Twitter, follow it if you haven't. I created a community. It's called the Rep Squad. And in the Rep Squad community, I tweeted for video, is it okay to make public social media account for children and center all the content around them, effectively making them an influencer? Usually the legal age for children to have accounts is over 13 years old. The loophole is creating a parent-owned account. Generally with this new community, my idea is to ask questions and then I will read some of your guys' comments. I'm gonna put the link to this into the description below and in the pinned comment so you guys can join it. I highly encourage that you do this because this is what I'm gonna be doing for future content. One user says, not with the intent of making it an influencer account. I'm all for making them an account so they can post for friends and family, but why put your children on the internet for random strangers to see? You can't guarantee that bad people or questionable folks won't see their posts. Another user saying, I'm a mom to a toddler. I cannot imagine putting her out there for the world to see at her age. It's like being a child actor. It just isn't a good environment for her to grow up in. And there are just so many creeps out there. It's why my stuff is set on private. And also I wanna pass this question off to you. What do you think about this? Is it okay to make uh, accounts and center them around children? We're also gonna talk about the laws about this a little bit further in the video. Let me know in the comment section below. And despite massive backlash from worried moms, Jacqueline released a statement doubling down and defending her videos. This is what she had to say. The past few months have been incredibly distressing and I've learned a lot. What started out as a hobby to make a digital scrapbook for my daughter, Ren, grew into an interesting role for me as a single stay at home mom. Ren is my number one priority. Now, I do want to say that scrapbooking is something that's usually done privately or amongst the family, not something that's so uh, widespread, especially with a child who cannot consent to this content at all. Hmm. I feel like if that was your number one priority, then the internet would know nothing about your daughter, is you would keep it private. I'm not sure how this conspiracy theory got started and spiraled out of control. What you need to know is that no law enforcement agencies I conferred with, including the FBI, have found any proof that my daughter's likeness appears on inappropriate websites. These rumors are 100% false. What do you mean there's no evidence? You're the one that's putting the content out there. As previously shown in this video, there are multiple examples of this inappropriate content on the internet so when you say it's a hundred percent false i don't know what you mean tiktok analytics show that my followers are 76.8 percent female that's more than 13 million females including lots of moms and i thank you for watching and for your interest in my family what baffles me is that rumor spreaders express such passionate concern for my daughter i don't understand why she give us the tiktok analytics on females it's almost like she doesn't know that females can also be predators let's examine the analytics i'm going to break out the paint and uh the calculator here so we can do some of this uh quick math so she's got about 17 million four hundred thousand followers and she said 13 a little bit over 13 million were female so let's go ahead and subtract that right there and that gives us about 4.4 million that are men. So I'm pretty sure her narrative here is implying that um, men are the problem. So by her standards, 4.4 million people are still the problem. I'm just gonna let you know here that uh, that doesn't make any sense. Yet law enforcement has found zero real proof about these untrue allegations. Creating videos talking about scurrilous rumors that my three-year-old daughter appears on sites isn't proof. Repeating false information over and over will never convert. Now, 
I don't think we, at this point we can't call these rumors. I mean, I'm pretty sure that these are not rumors. But I do want to point out that, I mean, I don't think they have to be on those types of websites to be an issue. I will say I see a significant issue it just being on the platform that you're on itself, not to mention multiple other public social media platforms. I look forward to making more videos with my daughter, and I am committed to making changes when I turn my account comments back on. I will filter them to remove offensive comments and report and block accounts as necessary. Online safety precautions that will remain in effect include disabling the ability to download or duet our videos. Stopping predators is a job for law enforcement. Now hold on a second. You just you do understand that even if you turn off the ability to bookmark these videos that people are still going to be able to download these videos. I mean, the video that we're watching now, I downloaded it very easily. If you go over to the Repzilla TikTok, yes, I do have a TikTok. You, it'll be in the description. Click the video. I just posted a new video. Copy paste URL. Go to free TikTok video downloader. Paste it. Download it. That's not going to be a solution for you. Thanks for listening. And you can read the full version of my statement on my Instagram account, TikTok Ren. The link is in my bio. Now, the Instagram post was pretty much the script for the video that just showed you, but there were some added parts, and I've highlighted those in blue. Some of the most important ones. She says, this ugly situation is a good reminder. You should not believe everything you read on the internet. As I've showed you in this video, this isn't a scrivulous, whatever the heck she said, rumors. This is a serious situation. And she also said that her daughter's going to continue the same kind of content that she is making. So, that's that. If you want to read this whole response, just pause screen. So it appears that the mother sees absolutely no issue with anything that's going on. Everything is just innocent and it's all great. And TikTok is apparently deleting the top search results for Rin Eleanor, which is basically hiding the severity of the situation. Then people started noticing what happens when you type Ren into the search bar. All these searches come up and that's obviously the top searches for this thing. Um, most of them are gone now, but some of them were like Ren scandalous outfits. She's three. One that still pops up is Ren Pickle. So TikTok's actively deleting comments while at the same time they're also suggesting videos to people and it's some of the worst videos uh, of Ren. This keeps popping up on my suggested. This is sick and needs to be seen. Protect this girl, please. Eleanor Ren eating a pickle. And some people on the internet were saying that this goes off of uh, content that the, the user already watches, but some Reddit people said otherwise. Don't suggest the searches go off what you watch. No, I thought so too, but it was popping up on other people's as well. It's just trending searches. As you can see, this is definitely being suggested. So they're clearing out top searches while at the same time they're suggesting videos to viewers. And then you find out they're actively removing videos raising awareness about this situation. YouTuber I Never says this. It's obviously an extremely delicate situation and in that three minute compact TikTok, I covered a lot of vital information. I covered a lot of serious things with lots of screenshots and I also linked to a more in-depth YouTube video about the situation which goes over far more than any other three minute TikTok possibly could. And that's not me throwing shade on other TikTokers. That's me saying that this situation is so unbelievably deep that it takes more than three minutes to pretty much go through and explain absolutely everything. But strangely enough, my TikTok got took down for bullying and harassment. It's almost like they are struggling to find the balance of uh, hiding this situation and making money. So again, I want to thank you guys for re-watching this video uh, and sharing it and engaging with it. The more you engage with it, likes, comments, it does uh, tell the algorithm that this is a video that needs to be suggested out. So I appreciate that. Let's go to my Twitter. On the Repzilla Twitter, I tweeted on September 9th saying, I'm pretty upset right now. We creators work hard on our videos and then make sure they pass the review system. I diligently wait for all my videos to be manually reviewed. And my last upload was no different. Here is evidence it was manually reviewed green. Team YouTube fixed this. Now why this is so significant is because once a video has been manually reviewed in the green, it's supposed to be permanent. So if they go back in there and they reverse this, 
themselves, then that is directly against their own guidelines. And that's a big deal. They said, sorry about that, working on this for you now. I said to him again, YouTube, I need an update. This is killing my video in the algorithm and crushing my faith in your system. They said, we're still looking into this. Thanks for your patience. I said, thank you. They gave me an update saying that we can't review the video anymore as it's been edited. Appreciate you for understanding. I said, what do you mean edited? I haven't made any edits to the video at all. I do not have an understanding. I'm going to need an explanation because what you said doesn't make any sense and it doesn't feel right. And again, they told me that they've checked it. It's been edited and re-reviewed. Now, make a note, I have not edited anything. Uh, how the review system works, you put it into review and then you wait so up to seven days for the video to go green. And it's significant because it directly impacts how many people are going to see your video. After you've worked really hard on it, it makes sense that you want it to be seen, especially when it's raising awareness about an important topic. I said the only thing I did was change the thumbnail and it's perfectly okay thumbnail. I wait for my reviews like I'm supposed to. And the issue is that this one went yellow days after manual review was complete. The video is now being suppressed. So as you can see right here, it shows when the video was turned yellow. It could, it's done. If you if you wanted to see that video, you're not. Go, it's not gonna happen. So, so currently this is what views are looking like. Gone, like this is, you're not getting views on this video anymore. And then they gave me the most BS response that I've ever read in my entire life saying, getting consistent views relies on viewers' interest and current popular trends. And then they link me to search and discovery system. Like I have been on the platform for five years and like, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a slap in the face. I said, look, I edit my videos in a way that will be advertiser friendly. I make multiple versions of said video and wait for review. I only go public when YouTube criteria are met. A human gave me the green light, and for days it was okay. I didn't edit anything after that. Again, here's the email saying, great news, after manually reviewing your video, we've determined that it is suitable for all advertisers. I said, there's absolutely no reason that this should happen. My review rating is awesome because I do what you guys want. Switch it back to green or give me a legit reason for this happening so I can make sure it never happens again. This is pretty obvious. I think it goes without saying, but I never heard from them again. It's very weird behavior. So I thought I'd add some new information to this video, re-upload it and give this video an opportunity to be seen by you uh, since you probably haven't seen it. So, so as you can see, this is a very dangerous situation with a lot of complexity in it. Uh, Andrew Selavec, a social media professor at the University of Florida says, as adults continue to share more of their lives, their children included, they should proceed with caution. Posting videos of your underage child to achieve the fame that you cannot get yourself is exploitation. He says it's non-consensual exploitation. Not only are TikTok users saving the videos of underage child to watch over and over again, but they are also creating duets with videos of Ren that are inappropriately izing the child. And we've actually started reaching an age where children who were subject to this type of treatment, mothers that were putting and creating social media accounts around them have grown up and they're speaking out about their experiences. This is just gonna kind of be a little one-on-one -on -one conversation with a lot of mommy TikTokers. Um, this is not a video to attack you guys. This is just me trying to get you to see from a child's perspective who had their life posted continuously online. And this is me really, really hoping that you'll hear to what I have to say. My entire life, my entire childhood, whether that was when I was sick, when I got my period, embarrassing moments, whatever, it was all posted on the internet. I had no privacy growing up, absolutely no privacy. People who I didn't even know existed were knowing such personal things about my life. And sure, maybe this wasn't my mother's intention but it opened me up to experience so much predatory behavior from the male viewers from her profile. You know what? Despite how good her intentions were, despite her efforts of trying to protect me and keep me safe from the creeps, it didn't work because they had access to me and they knew everything about me. Keep that in mind next time you post your kid. Currently, there are multiple young women speaking out about this subject and how it affected them. I chose this video because um, this individual probably had uh, one of the worst experiences. And I, I hate that this happened, but um, speaking about these situations need to happen. A lot of people have been asking this very similar question. And to be completely honest with you, it has destroyed me in so many more ways than one. I'm just gonna give a brief warning before we dive into this. Um, I was a 
by two of the men who did have access to viewing her page and posts about me. So <laughs> that itself uh, obviously severely impacted me, love. <laughs> weird comments even threats made like i got messages when i was like in middle school like on facebook messenger from a random person saying that they like saw me riding my bike and it was just really weird so i've definitely developed agoraphobia <laughs> severe trust issues like i mean severe doing the best i can you know to heal and cope and work through that but i'll be honest it has impacted my life and even my relationship because unfortunately my entire life i did grow up with people using these things that they knew about me kind of against me or to get too personal with me and that's just the beginning of it so we've covered a lot of information in this video and you might be asking yourself well aren't there laws that protect children from this kind of thing and the answer to that is uh yeah and kind of no at least not yet family law attorney sabrina cronin says this although there are children labor laws in place in entertainment even in more progressive states laws on social media still have not caught up to give child influencers the protection that they might need I think one of the biggest reasons for this, and a lot of people might not know this, but the internet was actually born in 1983, so it's still relatively new, and as these situations develop, we see a lot of nuances within them, and uh, we just don't know how to handle them yet with mental health and other situations with vulnerable individuals. But I do look for laws to be made in the future. And for now, I encourage parents to be careful when they post their children online. You understand what this is, you see what's going on and the impact that it can have. It's extremely dangerous. That being said, as interesting as this is, or since it's more interesting to me, that's right, you guessed it. I wanna know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative or interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for those likes as always, brothers and sisters. I will see you in the next video. I am going to try to uh, upload more videos. I. I'm going to be more consistent. I'm sorry that I haven't been consistent. It's been a rough year, but uh, feels good to be here. Like I said, I'm in a very good mental health space. I've been very active on Twitter. So if you're not following my Twitter, I'm trying to get to 30,000 this year. Also subscribe to the channel. I also would like to get to 250,000 uh, subs this year on the YouTube channel. I've got a lot of good things planned. We're coming out with new merch soon uh, to do with Greg and uh, so many other things we also uh i'm going to do a live stream for the patreon so if you want to join the patreon uh the link is also below check it out see if it's something for you also thank you to my patrons i really appreciate it for your continued ongoing support um yeah and that being said that's just another way to show that you're repping if you're not repping you're gregging how do you do that all you do is subscribe with notifications turn on be in the comment section after every single video because i'm going to be there greg the cat's going to be there in spirit and the rest of the rip saw community as well and i expect to see you there too because this channel Loves you. Whew. It's a long video, guys. Long. It's like a two hours of recording. I'm just sitting here.